Hello everybody and welcome to the Netbird channel. In this one, we're going to be doing something a little fun. We are going to be utilizing offsite GPUs in our local machines using Netbird. Whether if you're a developer, an AI researcher, a hobbyist, there's a chance your actual workflow might be fragmented. Maybe you don't have access to the specific GPU that you want to run in your local AI environment, or maybe you do, but it's offsite in a VPS or just an offsite computer. While your development environment, your data, your apps might be hosted locally on your laptop or desktop, in which the biggest hurdle to get what you want done often isn't the code, it's the actual network. Maybe you have an account on one platform, but you see a GPU on another platform that's just a little bit cheaper. Or maybe, for example, you're building your application on something like AWS, but maybe Vulture or DigitalOcean has cheaper cloud GPUs. Traditionally, actually linking these things together would involve complex firewall rules, public IP whitelisting, and configuring legacy VPN software. What if we could make your remote GPU no matter where it is in the world, feel like it's running on your local machine. And that's where Netbird comes in, the zero trust remote connection platform that turns our scattered AI infrastructure here into a unified platform. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be having some fun with open web UI. And with this running, in our previous video, I showed you how to set up AI locally using your local resources. For this, this is just running on a single Proxmox LXC container no GPUs or anything like that. So I needed an alternative solution. So for that, I went over here to a cloud platform where I'm not specifically promoting or recommending anything. This is just a couple that I spun up. But here we have an incredibly lightweight GPU that I went ahead and tested this with. I do already have this one on the Netbird network, all linked in, ready to go. So these models are not on the local machine. This is running on Olama on the uh, VM for that GPU. All linked in here, ready to go super fast. What is Netbird? And ready to go. But you see, this is a little bit slower than I would prefer. Now, while it is a little slow, I don't want to get rid of the cheaper GPU, but I want to throw in a powerful one real quick just to maybe test some AI workloads. Maybe you're developing a different app. And just for a short amount of time, you want to throw something powerful at it. That's what we're going to do real quick. Testing with Olama and Open Web UI. Because Olama actually has a pretty cool feature. If we go into our settings and then go into admin settings under connections here, we can add different sources for the Olama API. And you can see right there, I have Vulture and you could have multiple things kind of creating a, a mesh of GPUs that you have access to. So what I've done real quick is I've spun up another slightly more powerful VM here on DigitalOcean and I am logged in over here so I can go ahead and run some commands, install the tools that I'm gonna to need to connect this to my local instance of Open Web UI. Now, I'm not gonna go over the installation process for Open Web UI. We do have a separate video that we covered that. It's really easy to spin up. You can use a Docker container and have it up in minutes. And in here, in this new DigitalOcean VM, you can see I already have uh, the NVIDIA GPU up and running. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see everything. You can see here we're running a single H200 GPU, which is gonna be a little bit more powerful than the partial GPU that I currently have running. If I log into network, I already have an access control policy spun up. This one is going to be my LLM mesh network, which is pretty simple. You can see it's just any devices that have full access to any devices, creating just the mesh with anything that has this policy. And if I go over to peers, zoom out just a bit, we can see I have open web UI there in the LLM mesh, as well as my current Vulture cloud GPU. Now I want to add this DigitalOcean, so all I'm gonna do is generate a setup key for this. So if I go on over here, let's create a new setup key. This can just be my DigitalOcean LLM. I'm gonna keep everything as is. I'm gonna add this to that LLM group, so when I uh, connect, it will automatically get added. Let's create our setup key. Let's install Netbird and then just copy this command right here. So let's drop this in to install Netbird. It does not take too much time at all. And while that does that, we could grab the actual run Netbird command that includes our setup key automatically. So let's give that a copy. And when we see it prompting Netbird up, that means we're ready to go, ready to connect. So let's run this. And just like that, we're connected. So if I run a Netbird status, we're connected. We have Netbird IP address. We have our peers that are connected with that LLM mesh access policy. And if I head back over to peers, for example, 
and I'm just to ping another machine such as Open Web UI, which I already have connected using the same exact process that I just showed you. If I copy this, give it a ping, just to see if we can reach it, you can see we're good. And just to kind of demonstrate that access policy in action, if I disable my LLM mesh, you could see we now have an issue. Let's go ahead and re-enable it. And then we should be able to reestablish connection there. So now we are able to connect or talk to Open Web UI from our peer, and we're gonna need this in a little bit, our DigitalOcean AI Ubuntu. We could just use this DNS name later on in Open Web UI. But of course we actually need to install Olama and add an LLM. So if we head on to the Olama website, click on download, under Linux, we have this simple curl command. So we're just gonna give that a copy and then drop that on in there. And just like with NetBird, it will install all the prerequisites and everything that we're gonna to need to get going. There we go. And we can see that the GPU is installed. So it's automatically detecting that. So we're gonna be good to go in that regard. Now let's grab a model real quick. On a llama, if we just head over to models, we can see a whole bunch of them. Now I already been trying out a, a lighter deep seek model over on my other cloud GPU. Let's go ahead and try GPT OSS on here, just like we kind of did in our last video. On our other one, we've been messing with the 7 billion parameter deep seek model. This one, or this GPU is a little bit more powerful. So we should be able to run this 20 billion parameter. So let's give that a copy, drop that on in, and it will take just a bit to download. That is impressively fast. 1.4 gigabytes a second. That's the fastest thing I've ever seen download. And here we are, we're in the model. This isn't how we're gonna actually be interacting with it, but just to make sure, how do I make a netbird setup key? Whoa, look at that go. Holy camoly. Man, that was, <laughs> that was fast. All right, now to get out of here, it's control D. So now we need to actually expose Olama so that our uh, other machine can actually see it. And for that, we're gonna need to edit the service for system CTL. So I'm gonna wanna paste this in right here, sudo nano, editing the Olama service, jump in there and under service here, what we're gonna want to do is add a line, specifically this line right here. So if I paste this, we are exposing our Olama host to the entire system. Let's go ahead and output that. As you can see, if I run this command right here before actually restarting the service, we could really only see this port on our local IP address there. Now let's go ahead and reload the daemon, restart Olama. And now if we run that command again, you're gonna see everything is exposed for that port. So now we can actually test and we might need to change a firewall rule, but before I do that, we are going to grab the host name for our DigitalOcean Ubuntu instance, head over to Proxmox in our actual shell for Open Web UI. First, we'll do a simple ping just to make sure it can see the Netbird machine, which it can, so we'll get out of that. On our local machine, we could test to see if Olama is running with a curl command. So localhost at the port 114434. Oh, Hit enter and we'll see Olama is running. Now, if we do the same thing, we're gonna be able to see if we need to add a firewall rule. So again, a curl command, HTTP, at the port 1143, like that, hit enter, and we could see that Olama is running, which is awesome, so we don't need to mess with the firewall at all. In which, at this case, we're basically ready to add this into our local instance of Open Web UI. So I'm just gonna grab this URL that I just made right here, so let's give that a copy. Head on over to Open Web UI. Again, we are in the settings under your user, settings, admin settings, connections. And here, we're gonna go ahead and add a new connection. So for our base URL, we're gonna paste this on in. We could even change this type to local because it's gonna look and feel like a local instance. You can go ahead and set up API keys for extra security. I'll leave a link down below. But just for now, just for this test, we're gonna go none for the authentication. And if I go ahead and verify this connection, you could see that the connection is verified. So we can save this now. And now we have two cloud GPU connections or two Olama API connections within our single local instance of Web Open Web UI. Now, if I head over here and I click on my models, you can see I now have that GPT OS model 
which is going to be running on a completely different GPU. So I could select that and actually give it a prompt. But before I do that, I'm actually going to run something so we can see it in action. So if I run this command, it's going to kind of give us a live feed of what our GPU is doing. So if I ask it something kind of complicated, let's say something like that, let's uh, set up local web UI instance with offsite GPUs running a llama, all connections done with Netbird. If I send that message, it should work pretty quick. But if we look over here, we can see some action. It is indeed working the, that's at 84. So yeah, it was definitely cooking and you can see it filling out right here really fast, almost faster than actually using a web instance. Now these steps probably aren't super accurate compared to what we're actually doing. Actually, it's pretty close. But then for example, I could actually grab my prompt that I gave it and compare the output to a different GPU with a different model on a different server, just from our one single instance. So if I copied that and I switched over to the 7 billion DeepSeq model, granted it might use this as context now, but if I paste that in, we can see it thinking of it. Yeah, much, much slower on this uh, much cheaper GPU with the uh, lighter model. So we're probably not going to get nearly as good of an output on this one, nor is it going to be as quick. See, so it's still going through the prerequisites there. So this is great. You saw it's super easy to set up. A lot of these cloud GPUs charge by the hour. So if you just need something super, super powerful for a couple hours, you can spin one up, drop it into an instance of something that you already have, use it, play with it, get rid of it without actually changing or messing with the infrastructure of any of your other projects. Install NetBird, add it to your access policy group, change your config and you're done. No more messing with traditional VPNs, opening ports, none of that stuff. And of course you have the freedom to choose, like I mentioned earlier, if you're building a project either locally or on AWS, Google Cloud, whatever, you have the freedom not to use that platform's specific infrastructure. You can use whatever you want. So if you're running like OpenWebUI or your own application locally, you're using an AWS GPU and something happens to AWS, you can easily just connect another GPU from another provider. Super easy. So by removing this network barrier, NetBird allows you to stop worrying about how you're going to connect to things and focus on just what you're trying to build. With all that, again, I'll link to two videos down below or right here we have our Proxmox guide if you're interested in that and our previous video where we just did all of this locally if you want to learn how to set up something like open web UI step by step. Do subscribe for future videos and with all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.